Hi everybody, it's uh, Bruce Lambert from HowCommunicationWorks.com uh, and this is our uh, first video and uh, I want to talk to you about how communication works. Uh, the purpose of this whole channel and the, the website and the blog is to try to help you master the social world to be more effective at work and in your personal relationships to get more done and basically just to be happier uh, by having more effective communication skills. And I want to do this not by teaching you just tips and techniques and things you have to memorize and scripts that you have to say. From, from time to time I might actually teach you some tips and techniques because those can be useful. But my longer term goal is to really teach you how communication works and how the social world works in a fundamental way so that when you're in any communication situation you will be able to analyze what's happening and have a much better idea why people are doing what they're doing, why people are saying what they're saying, how to interpret what they're saying, and of course, how to say what you want to say and create the impression that you're trying to create, clearly communicate your plans, your goals, your intentions, your feelings, etc. Uh, so, so that's the goal. Um, and I've already started writing about some of this stuff on the blog on HowCommunicationWorks.com, so I hope you'll, you'll check that out. Now we'll include a link down below with, with the video where you can uh, check that out. Uh, and if you're interested, you know, you can subscribe and, and get more blogs uh, in, your, in your inbox. Uh, one of the things I want to, to start by talking about today is, is really one of the single most important ideas in thinking about how communication works and how the social world works. Uh, and, and that is, you know, what is our basic concept of what's going on in social interaction? And, and so what metaphor should we use to think about social interaction? And the metaphor that's influenced me most and that I want to encourage you to use also is the, the metaphor of that the world is a stage. So there's a very famous quote from Shakespeare I wrote down that, that from one of his poems and he says, all the world's a stage and all the men and women, uh, many players. They have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts. So the poem goes on, it's very beautiful, and talks about all the different roles a person plays throughout the course of their life. Um, but the, the most important aspect of, of this metaphor in the beginning is just the idea that the world is a stage and that we are all players on the stage. So this metaphor has been developed into a whole theory of communication by people like the sociologist Irving Goffman and, and, and others, but especially Irving Goffman. And if you've read some of my blog about politeness and face and so on, you'll know that, that Irving Goffman, um, who was a 20th century sociologist, um, is, is one of my heroes and, and one of the people whose work influenced me most in the way I think about communication. So uh, Goffman is famous also for, for thinking about the social world as, as a stage and all of us being performers on that stage. So one of the most important things to understand that about how communication works is that in every social situation, we are engaged in a performance. Uh, that is, we are all playing a role. Um, and just as Shakespeare says, Shakespeare says, you know, and one man in his time plays many parts. So all of us actually have many roles that we play in our lives. We think of them as our, as our identities or as our role identities. So, so in my life, I might have something like, I'm a father, and I'm a brother, and I'm a son, and I'm a friend, and I'm a college professor, I'm a scientist, I'm a musician, I'm a blogger, uh, I'm all of these things. So, so these are the, the various identities that, are, uh, that make me up as a person, and associated with each of these identities is a set of performances. So I am, in, in every social situation, acting out one or more of these roles. Uh, and you know, this has a lot of important implications, and I'll, and I'll try to explore a few of them in this video, but I'll come back to this idea over and over again because it's so central to the way I think about communication. So what's one of the first ideas to think about? One is that some of us like to think of our identity as having sort of one identity, our authentic identity. And you know, sometimes I ask people, well, where is that identity? And people will maybe touch their chest and say, well, it's, it's right here, it's in my heart, that's my that's my central identity and I can, and that's who I really am. Or maybe it's, it's in my head and I, I really know who my authentic self is. 
Or sometimes when we're having a kind of identity crisis, we might think, I don't, I don't know who my authentic self is, and we're trying to find it. But with Goffman and people who think of the world as a stage, they wouldn't actually say that we have an authentic identity. Um, there is no one authentic identity. There's multiple roles that we're playing. We play different roles in different situations at different times. And, and also, uh, by this way of thinking, there is no center that is our authentic self, and there is no uh, singular identity. There's nothing but performances. Our identity doesn't exist apart from these social performances. So one way of thinking about this, I sometimes you know, tell my students that sometimes we want to think of, of our, our self as a, as a person, our identity, as like a peach. And if we, we eat all the outer part of the peach and in the middle, there's the, the pit. And that's the, our core self, our core identity, and it's solid and it's there. But that's not really what a human being is like, at least not by my way of thinking. We're more like an onion. So in an onion, you peel away all the layers, and in the middle, there's nothing. It's nothing but layers. So that's the way I think of ourselves and our identities. There is no core. It's nothing but performance. Or another way to think of it, it's performance all the way down. There's no core. You strip away all the performances and there's nothing left. So our identities are nothing but performances in the social world. Um, so, so what are these identities? So, so each of these identities, you know, father, brother, college professor, blogger, musician, whatever they are, each of these identities is associated with particular performances. And, and, and first of all, you know, to have an identity is a sort of imagined thing. So when I think of myself as a father, I have an idealized vision of myself in that role and an idealized sense of how I should act and how I should behave. And, uh, and of course, then I have my actual performances in the world as a father. And sometimes my performances in the world live up to my idealization, and sometimes they don't. Uh, and that's the way it is with all of our identities. Um, so we have these identities, which are these idealized, imagined fantasies of who we want to be in each of our roles as a brother, father, son, um, employee, uh, etc. And we try to act out in the social world a performance that, that corresponds to this vision we have in our imagination. Um, so if we think of the world as a stage and our identity as being nothing more than our performances, there's one other key concept in this metaphor, and that's the idea of an audience. So in, in any performance, there is an audience. And Actually, it's, it's not really a performance unless there's an audience. The performance doesn't really seem real or valid unless there's an audience. It's the same thing in the social world. Now, the interesting thing about performances in the social world is we can be our own audience. And in fact, we are our own audience. And oftentimes, we are our own most important audience for many of our performances. That is, no matter what anyone thinks of our performance, we are often always our harshest critic of our own performances. So even when there's no one else around, we're still engaged in the social performance with ourselves as the only audience. But in many, many social situations, there are actually other people, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or whether there's a crowd. So in those situations, we're per literally performing in front of an audience of these other people. Um, and with each performance, we are trying to gain support or legitimacy for one of these identities. So in every single social situation, I'm making a decision. Which of my identities should I act out in this situation? And that determines how I'm going to perform in this social situation. So we behave in a particular way in order to dramatize our identity in front of an audience. And just like in a real performance, the audience can either like our performance or not like our performance. And our identity, kind of the strength of our identity and our self-esteem and uh, the validity of our identities kind of ebbs and flows based on how much support we feel like we're getting from the important audiences in our lives. Um, and, and this support, you know, the, the theoretical word they use for this is, is role support. So we seek support from certain audiences for, for certain of our identities. And they can either give us this support or not. 
Um, so to try to summarize a couple of these important ideas, the world is a stage. We have these role identities, many of them, but there's nothing to these identities except our performances. A performance, the identities consist of these performances. And we can't sustain these identities without performing in the social world. And just performing isn't enough. We actually need audiences to validate our performances, and then we can feel like that identity is valid and secure and so on. So for me as a college professor, I have to give lectures and teach students and, and mentor students and things like that. Those are the performances that are essential to my identity as a college, as a college professor. And in order to feel like I'm really a good college professor, the, the critical audience for me is my students, and those students have to validate my performance. And if they do, then my identity as a college professor is safe and secure for another day. But the interesting thing about our identities is that each of our identities has this hunger for support, for role support. And this hunger is insatiable. It, it never, we never lose our appetite for role support. So today, I might give a lecture uh, and my students might like it and I can leave thinking, oh, I did a great job, I'm a really good college professor. Or I talk with my kids and my kids say, oh, you're a good dad and for that day I feel like a good dad. But tomorrow, that feeling kind of goes away and I need more role support the next day. So our identities are not secure in the sense that they last for a long time. We constantly need uh, role support from important audiences that are able to give us that. And it's interesting that not all audiences can validate all of our identities. Some audiences can validate some identities and not others. So for example, my students, they can validate my identity as a college professor, but they can't validate my identity as a father. So if a student says to me, you're a good father, I sort of say, well, well thank you, but what would you know? And that doesn't really count, that validation. So each of our identities requires validation and support from specific audiences that have kind of the credibility to validate that particular performance. So if we engage in an artistic performance, like a, we sing a song or act in a play or paint a painting or something like that, and our mother says, oh, that's lovely, honey. I, that was such a good performance. Well, we think, that's my mother. She loves everything that I do. And so we don't feel like our mother's approval validates our performance in a lot of domains. But if an art critic says they like our painting, or if the audience gives us a standing ovation or something, or we get a raise at work, that's the kind of validation that really, that really counts to us. Um, so we go through worlds, uh, we go through the social world trying to seek validation for these role identities and um, feeling really bad when we don't get it. Uh, so in every situation, we're trying to decide how to be, how to act, what to say. Uh, and we're making all these choices about how to behave. And we're, we're evaluating our own performance and we're evaluating the feedback we get from audiences. And you know, in some of the recent blog entries, I talked about this idea of face, saving face and losing face. It's, this idea of face is really connected to the idea of performances and identity that I'm trying to develop um, today in this discussion. So when we lose face, what's really happening? We lose face normally through a failed performance. So a classic losing face might be something like um, you walk into a room and, you're, and if you're a man and your zipper is down and you embarrass yourself, or you mispronounce a word in front of your friends, or you spill food on yourself. All of these performances are inconsistent with the identity that you're trying to project. And when you, when you make one of these, when you perform in a way that's inconsistent with your desired identity and with your imagined identity, this discrepancy between your idealized self and the real self that just showed up in your performances causes embarrassment, causes loss of face, causes humiliation, causes us to want to run and flee from the social situation. So, um, so much of social interaction can be understood in terms of how people are engaging in performances in order to bolster one or more identities. So you can begin to think about your own social behavior as like, what am I saying? Why am I saying it? Why did I act that way? And you can think to yourself, well, which of my identities was I 
acting out? Which role was I playing in that situation? What kind of support was I trying to get for that role? Um, and you, when you look at the behavior of other people, which might at first seem puzzling, if you start to think of their behavior in terms of their identity, that is, look at their behavior, don't take it personally as if it was about you, but think about their behavior as their own need to engage in a performance that somehow supports and validates one of their identities. And if you can understand other people's identity goals, that is, what roles are they trying to act out? What kind of support are they looking for for those identities? People's behavior starts to make a lot more sense. This, this idea of identity, I sort of have an identity-centered view of the social world. Eventually, I want to talk about health and illness and chronic illness and, and embarrassment and politeness and all of these ideas come back to the centrality of identity. So I really see one of the most fundamental ideas in understanding the social world is just this idea that, that the world is a stage, that we are all playing roles, that we have multiple identities, not just one, but that at any given moment, I'm engaged in a performance which is trying to dramatize and illustrate and exhibit for other people that I am a certain sort of person uh, and that I, can, I have the right to claim a certain kind of identity. Um, and when things go well in the social world, my performances are consistent with my imagination, and with my ideal self, and I feel validated by an important audience. They give me role support and everything goes well and I leave that situation feeling happy and content and satisfied and validated. And I may, may even have my self-esteem bolstered. Um, when things go badly, our performances fall short of this ideal. And the audiences that matter to us don't give us role support. And in those situations, we feel embarrassed, humiliated. We want to run away from the social situation. We might even abandon that identity. So if we just can't get support for some of our identities, that's so painful that over time, we might just say, forget about it. I'm not going to try to be a musician anymore or an artist or a college professor or something. I just can't get any support for that identity. So I'll leave you with one last example. Um, if you remember the movie, um, was it Castaway with Tom Hanks, where he's, he's on an island all by himself. So think about what does Tom Hanks do? Eventually, in order not to go crazy, he makes friends, right? Remember who his friend is in the movie? It's a volleyball that he paints a face on. So he puts eyes and a nose and a mouth, and the, he names this volleyball Wilson because that was the brand name of, of the volleyball or the soccer ball or whatever it was. And over the years that he's stuck on this island alone, he develops a relationship with Wilson and he talks about Wilson. So why does he do this? I think we can understand this in terms of performances and the social world being a stage and the need to have support for our identities. The fact is, if you are completely isolated, without any audience, it becomes almost impossible to sustain any identity at all. To sustain an identity, we have to have an audience that we can, in front of whom we can engage in performances. If there's no audience, there can be no role support. We can get no validation for our identities. And literally, our sense of self disappears. We could get into why you know, people in solitary confinement go crazy, in part because there's no social interaction. And we are social animals who need audiences so we can engage in performances and validate our identities. That's what it's like to be a person in the social world. And again and again, I'm going to return to this idea of identity, interaction, performance to, to explain a lot of what's happening and a lot of the choices that we make. So thanks for listening. Uh, if this is interesting to you, share it with your friends and, and um, check out howcommunicationworks.com. Come on over and sign up and you'll get email alerts every time I put up a new video or, or a new blog entry. So thanks a lot and we'll see you next time.